Hey, welcome back to Big Sticks. Uh, today, I'm going to be cooking something that I've been waiting to do for quite some time, and that's to cook uh, beef, plate ribs, short ribs, uh, English cut ribs, whatever you want to call them, but they're the ones that you typically see them use when you watch barbecue pitmasters. Uh, I see a lot of videos out there. A lot of folks are doing uh, back ribs, which are the ribs cut from behind the, uh, the rib roast, uh, which are pretty expensive. I mean, they cost a pretty penny. These ribs here cost me roughly $4.79 a pound. I have about 11 pounds of ribs. Uh, I have the full rack, by the way. I'll probably be cooking one way as a as a Filipino dish known as nalaga, and the other one I'm, I'm gonna be cooking on the, the pit barrel today. This is the first time I've cooked plate ribs this way. Um, as I said, I'm excited to do it. We'll see how it turns out. I've seen a lot of different videos where uh, folks have cooked these, and there's this, there's this sinuous silver skin top. Some say cut it off, others say don't. Uh, some say take this membrane off the back of the ribs, but if any of you have done beef ribs before, you know that's probably a, a, it's a pretty, how do I say it, unpleasant experience. So I'll probably cook these ones. These ones appear to be the, the thickest, which is going to give me a lot of play in terms of uh, its overall cook time. Uh, it, it's a more even cut, and I, I think that it'll cook more evenly as well. I'm going to season it up with salt, pepper, uh, garlic, onion, paprika, and try to keep it as simple as I can and see how they turn out. I have no idea how this is going to go, so stay with me. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use Worcestershire sauce. Um, I'm going to use it primarily as a binder, not so much for flavor. Uh, I'm not a, not a real fan of using mustard or anything like that. I don't want to use olive oil because I have very little on hand. And I'm just going to season this up pretty liberally. I've elected not to trim this. Again, not knowing how this is going to turn out. Maybe I'm going to regret it. Maybe I'm not. So I'm just putting down the kosher salt now. Uh, salt is a subjective seasoning, so I don't want to give any amounts, but I am going to season this pretty liberally with every ingredient that I have here. Here's the garlic powder. Or granulated garlic, I should say. There's granulated onion. Uh, paprika. And we're going to go with the black pepper here. I've seen these guys calling Texas style and putting a lot of pepper down. I mean, I like pepper, but not as much as they do. So, uh, again, use your own judgment in terms of how much you want to put on there. Just going to hit the ends off here with the same ingredients. Now, I do know that these ribs are going to, as they pull up on the bone, it's going to sort of concentrate the salt. So that's something that you want to keep in mind, too, when applying your salt and pepper. All right. Do the same thing for the other side here. Making a little bit of a mess. All right, I don't know if this is going to make a difference on the back side, being that membrane is on there, but I'm going to do it anyway. 
Why not? I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference in terms of its overall flavor because I don't think I'm gonna be eating the membrane off the back since all the meat are in between. But just in case it makes a difference, I'm gonna do it anyway. All right, we'll flip this back over. I'm gonna let this get nice and tacky, and we'll. Uh, I'm gonna go get the pit barrel started. Stay with me. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use Royal Oak since I don't have uh, post oak like they traditionally use in Texas. It's the closest thing I can come to uh, here at the house because I don't have any California red oak, which I don't know if tastes any different from that of Texas post oak. But I'm going to start that off using Kingsford briquettes over the top. And I'm going to try to keep the temperature inside the pit barrel somewhere in the neighborhood of 275. And I didn't fill the basket up with too much lump charcoal because I know that tends to burn a little hotter. And I'm also not starting it with a whole lot of Kingsford charcoal as well. I had a cool little trick too. I have a master built uh, butterball turkey fryer. It comes with this this hook for picking the basket up with. Works good on the uh, lifting up the pit barrel uh, charcoal basket. I'm gonna use the grill grate today instead of hanging the beef ribs. Last time I did beef ribs and hung them, I was a little disappointed. So, uh, put the grill grate in there and I'm gonna let it burn off some of the residual food that's still left on there. I think we're ready to go here. Let's get these ribs on. Wish me luck. Perfect time to wipe down the pit barrel while it's cooking. Good as new. All right, it's been about two hours. I'm gonna go ahead and give these a check. Okay, very nice. I got beautiful mahogany color from that paprika. I got good drawback going on the bone. I don't really cook by time, but they say with them this big, it's gonna take somewhere in the neighborhood of six hours. So I'm just gonna let these roll and I'll start temping at three hours. All right, so it's been about three hours. I just temped them. They're at about 168 degrees. Um, I'm assuming that it's gonna take you know another hour hour and a half possibly even two and right now I'm I'm sort of at a standstill as to whether or not I'm gonna use the Texas crutch but in the meantime I'm gonna do my man thing I'm gonna enjoy a nice cold beer and I'm gonna do what every man does and I'm gonna sit around the fire <clears throat> all right so we're about the three and a half hour mark and I, I I've made up my mind that you know, I, I just don't know how long this is gonna take, and so I'm just gonna crutch it. I mean, I've done it with brisket before, and it turned out fine. I was trying to see how it was gonna go, but wife is gonna be home from work, and I'm assuming she's gonna wanna eat, so let me get these wrapped. All right, that's looking good. Whew. What I am gonna do here is I'm gonna add a little bit of beef broth to this, accentuate that beefy flavor. I'm gonna double wrap this so that I don't lose any. All I've done is I've taken a little bit of better than bouillon and Try 
try not to get any holes in this so that it doesn't leak. But as I was saying, that better than bouillon, I just, you know, melted it down into some water and we'll get this on the grill. fat fuel in a fire now that I got it back on the grill um, I'm gonna let it go for another hour or so and then I'm gonna start temping it again and I'm shooting for about 203 204 somewhere in that neighborhood where the collagen starts to break down and it really starts to tenderize the beef basically what's happening out here on the grill is that it's braising inside that beef broth its own juices and it's really gonna help break down that rib Okay, so they've been on the pit barrel now for an hour, wrapped up, and I need to temp them. So I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, so they're temping out at about 202, 203, and some spots 207. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put them in a foil pan, leave them in that, that aluminum foil wrap, and I'm gonna rest them for about 30 to 45 minutes. We'll give it a cut, and then I'll show you what the end result is. So to rest them, I'm just gonna put them inside this cooler. I'm gonna leave them wrapped in the foil. I put them in a foil pan because I, you know, I've wrapped stuff before in a towel, and boy it's tough to get that smoke smell out of it even though you washed it a few times so I'm just gonna set it in here just in case it leaks any juices my my cooler is gonna stay clean and I'll see you in about 30 to 40 minutes all right here we go guys here's the moment of truth as I said before I've never done these types of ribs um, I've never done them on the pit barrel before we're gonna see how they turned out. Remember, I didn't cut any of the membranes out. I do know, however, that when I was temping these out, they were like butter pushing through. I've let them rest for about an hour in this here. Boy, they're still very hot. I'm gonna reserve those juices. Who knows, I might serve them with them later. Let's get these cut up. Let's see what we came out with. Wow. Okay. That is cutting through just like butter. Same thing from when I was pushing the thermometer through. Like I am literally not even pushing this knife down. I'm just letting the weight of the knife cut it open. I'll let you guys get a view of this here. So I'm gonna give you a close-up view of these ribs here. I mean, they're literally damn near falling off the bone. This is literally like meat jello. I don't know if you can see this, but they are absolutely leaking juice. Really, really soft, soft meat. Okay, so just one last thing to do here. I've gotta taste this. I mean, I'm super excited about this. Uh, let's go and see how this is going to be. Wow, that's pretty good. It's really, really soft. 
it is still hot. If I had anything else to do differently, I would probably put just a tad more salt. Uh, I think this big beef rib can really, really take it. Um, yeah, just, just more salt. Everything else, the flavor profile is perfect. Yeah, that's good. That's, I mean, that is absolute beef heaven. Okay, so I'm going to let one of my most finicky eaters try some of this beef rib here. I'm just going to pull a little off the bone for her. And I'll let her tell you what she thinks about it. <laughs> Yummy. Yummy? Cool. All right, guys, from my kitchen to yours, I want to wish you guys a happy holidays. Thanks for subscribing and watching. Big Sticks out. Not big sticks, baby. Big sticks. You know, stick is like your thing, what you like to do. You know, daddy likes to go fishing, I like to cook. That's my thing. Like you like to you like to color and draw and stuff like that. That's your stick. Got it? Yeah. It's happening, Daddy. What's that? so good but that I can't stop eating it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Man, that is just beef heaven. I know. Same thing, but I just taste it. That's like the best roast beef you could ever have. Yeah. Dad, can I have that with the pasta at dinner tonight Dad? of course because i really like this you should ask but mommy to taste it mommy is going to taste it juna come on this is a challenge we gotta eat the most as we can come on you're gonna get a big piece no Start eating. Pretty good? Hey, Majors. Hey, Majors. I'm, 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 I'm gonna make you feel it. Da, 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 da,